Today on Z Factory, I play with expensive frisbees. So welcome back, guys. It's the time we've all been waiting for. We got the Mustang. I got all my stuff from LateModelRestoration.com. I got the, the clutches of McLeod. McLeod clutch, McLeod flywheel. It's a twin plate RST clutch. The flywheel is a lightened steel. Pretty stoked about this setup. Um, Drivability is probably going to go out the window, but that's okay. We're just trying to go fast. Before you get started on anything like this, uh, don't wear flippy floppies. Uh, probably not safe. Um, get carbon air, put it on some jack stands, make sure it's nice and stable. This driveway slopes downwards, so I'm probably going to set the car a little higher on the front. That way it stays level. Here we go. She's on the jack stands. We're a little taller in the front than the back. That way it gets a little level. Now we are going to take a 10 millimeter socket and disconnect our battery. I've come to the conclusion real quick that I need lawn tube headers. That's my niece and nephew running around. Huh. These cats are huge, so it's gonna make getting this transmission out of here pain in the butt. Lawn tube headers gotta happen pretty soon. But first, we're gonna start off with getting this exhaust out of here because we have to access the dry shaft. So we're gonna take a loose back there, right here. Get that out of the way. These bolts right here are 15 millimeters. Get those loose. Give her a good banging on and that'll loosen it up. These exhaust brackets, 13 millimeters. Swing it out of your way. Put the bolts right where they went. You got 13 there, 13 there. Hi. 13 there, 13 there. And then you can drop this whole exhaust out. Stand up, stand up. That's a good effort. <laughs> Should we stop? No, no. It's fine, it's fine, it's good, that's good. Y'all are good. That was, high that's five, Ezra. High five, y'all. High five. Ezra, high five. Good job. I think it's dirty. I can't believe. Ezra, look at your hands. Don't touch your hair. See? Don't touch your hair with your dirty hands. Phil. Yeah. That was heavy. It wasn't that heavy. It wasn't that heavy. That's because that's always stronger than me. Oh, Ezra. What? We just took off the stuff that makes it quiet. So you might want to hold your ears. Don't even get, don't even try to get in. Go out there in the grass. Go out there in the grass. Go. Oh, Go in right here? Oh, no. No, where I can see you. Stay right here. Stay right here. You might want to put your hands over your ears. That's not loud. That's not that loud. <laughs> I'm used to it because I went to the car show with you. We have it. 
now you want to go ahead and get your shifter bezel up there's clips all the way around it you just firmly but delicately pull up and the clips will come undone and then you have these there's one there's another one right there there's another one over there there's three and you let go of those three and the whole piece will come up off that and that way our transmission can fall down all right update time i had to just go ahead and bust at it we're getting it dude i busted my lip yeah like i was get, i was in there with a wrench and i couldn't quite get it so i put another wrench against the frame trying to pry on that one out pop bam like i was i was bleeding everywhere man like all my mouth no bueno drive shaft some exhaust there there's the exhaust the kids helped me with starter down there oh walk out here to my truck pretty upset with this because these were so heat corroded that they stripped out coming off so I'm taking this up to work tomorrow and see if I can uh, thread chase those with my rethreader kit also see if I can either fix these or find something that's with it because they don't go on anymore the transmission cross member is unbolted the transmission is hanging i have the clip on the slave cylinder line disconnected so all i gotta do is get that up out of there with tight fit i have huge hands dude so i got a couple bolts around the bell housing and i got the shifter hanging down so now it's just gonna be take those bell housing bolts out make sure that line comes out clean don't get fluid all over my face like i did in the last video and then transmission will be on the ground I'm starting to feel like Ford put this here to deliberately annihilate your arm. Every time I roll over, I get my arm in the thing. It's driving me nuts. So it's the next day. Um, I took my catalytic converter pipe up to my job. And I fixed it up. As y'all saw earlier, these bolts were stripped out. The nuts were too, but I went ahead and uh, re-threaded them, so we're good to go there. So I picked up this long extension from Tyler Taylor, and uh, that way I can get to the top two bell housing bolts. So we should have the transmission on the ground here shortly. I just want to show y'all where we're at. All this is loose, drive shaft's off, the right side exhaust is off. This one does not come off unless you pull the manifold but it doesn't have to come out to do this all the bolts are out except for the top two but you can see how tight it is so what i'm gonna do is this is already loose i'm just gonna pull it back down let the transmission droop come into the top hit it with a half inch impact knock them out I'm gonna show you what all the other clutch install videos on 2015 up Mustangs fail to show you. That O2 sensor right there has to come out. It's the only way you're gonna clear the transmission. Also, see that line? You have to disconnect that. Get your dog ball out, let her drink. That's your clutch line. Because I didn't know about that O2 sensor, I'm gonna run to the store and grab a 22 millimeter wrench feed this wire through the box end of it and get her loose. All right guys, and there he, this transmission is coming out right now. All right boys and girls, there she is. And I pushed her back, that way the tunnel will keep her from falling over. Let's take this clutch off. Oh, I'm glad I bought 
bought a flywheel. That thing's stressed. Oh, man. Look at that. Once you look at it, it's falling in my face as I'm showing you. A little bit left on the back side. But it's all gone on the front. Wow. Now we're gonna attempt to take this flywheel off. Should be a 19 millimeter. Double check it. Yes, sir. 19 millimeter. I'm out of breath because I'm crawling into this car. Sucks. Let's send it. jack bolts there's these two threaded holes that way you take your your bolt and thread it in there get in there there you go thread that in there and then take another one thread it in the other side very nice that they have the uh, jack bolt set up this mosquito hawk is giving me a hard time. Little buddy flying around. You can see him in there. Now you're going to tighten these up and that's going to crank that flywheel off there. There's one. There's two. Flywheel's off. Now, let's take off that bolt and put it in the bottom. Oh, she's heavy. There it is, guys. That's all it takes. The new flywheel is seven pounds lighter. It's quite a bit trashed. I mean, you could probably machine this, but I wanted to take an upgrade step. Now I got clutch material all over this thing. Lightweight McLeod flywheel. We're gonna put this on up here. Okay, so before we put this in for good, every single one of these bolts should go in very easy by hand. That basically is clocked, for lack of a better term. If you have this on wrong, there's gonna be like two bolts that are acting like they don't wanna go in. Do not force it, it is not correct. Turn this thing one hole at a time, put all the bolts in by hand until you find where it fits. And right here is a sweet spot. Every single one of these are very easy to turn, nothing's jammed up. So that is where we need to be with this flywheel. So now I'm gonna pull them all back out, put some red thread locker on them and send them home. I've noticed this a couple times and it's kind of a cringe factor for me. When you're putting thread locker on a bolt, put this down so you can see. Put the thread locker from the top of the start of the bolt down about halfway. Do not put thread locker at the very end of the bolt. It's not going to do anything. When you put it up here, you thread it in, it's going to coat the whole boat as far as it needs to. If you put it up here, towards the end of the bolt, it's not, there's no, it's not gonna grab threads. Because you gotta think, you got flywheel or whatever else you're bolting down. So start your thread locker up here, like so. That's all it takes, just like that. Ta -da. <clears throat> Manufacturer recommendation factory was like 46 pounds something, rotate 90 degrees. Well, I think McLeod is recommending 73 foot pounds, which if you take 
factory spec plus 90 equals about the same. Um, this is my own car. I don't have a torque wrench with me today, so I'm just gonna send it with the impact. Do about four and a half hug and dug. It should be about 73 foot pounds somewhere under. I've done enough flywheels on my own cars. I've never had one fly off on me. Go ahead and hate all you want in the comments. I'm still gonna send it. Also, star pattern. Alright, now I'm gonna go around one more time. If you do decide to go this route, take extreme caution. These guns can put out way more torque than that crank can handle. So if you sit there and ugga dugga the crap out of this thing, you're gonna pull the threads right out of the back of your crank and you're gonna be buying a crankshaft. Here is the new McLeod floater disc because you're gonna have a friction disc here. That's gonna go like that. You're gonna have another friction disc here and then a pressure plate. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mock this up there. Obviously no other friction discs here. I'm gonna mock this up here just so we can figure out our dowel pin placement. Cause you see they give you two options. One, two, one, two, one, two. Also two different bolt options. So mock this up there, figure out where these dowel pins need to be. So our dowel pins are gonna be on the outside. Here's our pins. Did I focus on that? Whatever. These are dowel pins. Fat side goes into the flywheel. wheel. Place it up there on your hole. Get your little hammer. Preferably a rubber mallet. All of our dial pins are in. One, two, and three. Done it mushroom single one. You have to hit them pretty, pretty firmly because these are a press fit. But there they are. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so now you want to take the clutch disc that says bottom, flywheel side. This is flywheel side. So, flywheel side, put your alignment tool in there, put it in the pilot bearing. You want to make sure that can spin free. If that can't spin free, you got a pilot bearing issue. Now, back to this. Back to the floater disc. You can line that up on your dough pads. Boom, boom. Just like that. Looks great, don't it? I'm gonna treat this the exact same way. I'm gonna thread lock it, send it home. These bolts we just installed, these are a 12 millimeter. You wanna go ahead and send them home. So we got this all buttoned up. We have our bottom disc in there. You want to spin this. And it needs to be able to spin freely. You need to make sure this disc can turn. If it does not turn freely, contact McLeod. I think it's McLeodRacing.com and they'll be able to help you out with this. Now we're going to pull this pin. That disc is going to drop a little bit. We got our top disc. See top flywheel side. So put this in, top facing you, grab the other one, stick her off in there. Everybody's nice and happy. 
Looks great. Now we're going to install our pressure plate. This is her. Very nice piece from McLeod. There's a black mark right here. See that? Done by hand. A little black paint splatter. I don't know if you can see it, but up here in the top, there's another black paint mark. You're going to line these up. If you do not line them up, the balance will be off and you'll get a harsh vibration. Just like that. Now I'm going to install the hardware that holds the pressure plate on. It's not necessary to use thread locker on this because there's a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut that comes with it and usually when you have a lock washer, you do not need a thread locker. I'm just gonna put a dab on there for my peace of mind. Now we got flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. Repeat five times. The pressure plate nuts we just installed are 14 millimeter. We're going to go ahead and tighten them down. And a star pattern, of course. And I'm not tightening them all the way down all at once. Just a little bit. Like around. Just a little bit. Around. A little bit, just like that. What I'm doing right now is I'm checking the alignment, making sure everything's still nice and lined up. This is imitating the input shaft on the trans. You just want everything to glide right in. Just like that. Another thing McLeod wants you to know when you're installing this clutch is when you have the pressure plate tightened down, you need to make sure that these fingers are not past the face of that clutch. And we are golden. All right. There she is in all of her glory. It's such a shame that I had to cover up this work of art, just utter art, with an ugly transmission. Well, all right, guys. That's as far as we can get tonight. All I want to do is sit here and stare at this thing all night. I'm so excited about it. It's a little chilly outside. It's getting late. I'm going to pack it up and get back to it tomorrow. And here we are, beautiful day. Yesterday I was dodging rain all day long. I'd pull the tools out, I'd crawl in the car, it'd start raining, gotta put everything back up. And then as soon as it stops raining, pull everything back out, it starts raining again all day long, just back and forth, back and forth. Today is the most beautiful day I have seen in weeks. Being that this car has 40,000 miles, I didn't deem it necessary, maybe not even 40, like 36,000, I didn't deem it necessary to have to buy a new throw-up bearing. I know a lot of y'all are like, Stopping. It felt fine. There was a little bit of a, a grit to it from the old clutch material that blew up and got everywhere. What I did was I spread out the throwout bearing thoroughly with a penetrant oil and just worked it, worked it, worked it, and kept flushing it, flushing it, flushing it until it got smooth. And then I went and got a grease injector needle, and the grease injector needle will connect to the end of your grease gun, and you can stick it off in there and grease it, grease it, grease it, grease it, rotate it around, grease it a couple more times. I did that until it was buttery smooth. So I feel confident in my throwout bearing. If you're doing this yourself, go ahead and spend the extra couple hundred, 150, 200, depending on what throwout bearing you get. 
that way you just have that peace of mind I'm about to get under here I'm gonna grease up the dowel pins the alignment pins on the bell housing just a little bit to help it slide on easier McLeod recommends that you do not grease the input shaft um, because you don't want that grease slinging off into your friction pads your uh, clutch discs and ruining them I just did very very minute amount just to help like I said does it say not as I do I'm gonna go down here slam this transmission home and hopefully it goes in easier than it came out Well, I can already tell this is going to be a blast. Are you catching any notes of sarcasm? If you're not, you're on the wrong channel. Hell fire. We got rolling on this thing. Big Sticks Tim came over and we busted it out. This transmission is in, bolted up, starters on, exhaust mid pipes are on, O2 sensors are hooked up. I'm going to put some DOT4 brake fluid in this thing. The clutch reservoir shares the brake reservoir. It's all in the same system. So when you pull that line, it drops quite a bit. Um, I'm going to fill this up with DOT4. You can only use DOT4. And then you can proceed to pump the clutch pedal about 400 times. So here we go. Pull your little cap off there. Oh, do not drop. Put that there. Ooh, I do not like how that is already open. That was already open. Oh, Lordy. Sniff test says it's good. Let's get this one shot. Oh, I'll drip a little bit. It'll be fine. Okay, that's quite a bit. Might have put a little too much in there. But it's clear and you can't see where it's at. Okay, so I'm gonna get to pumping. Oh no, I dropped my cap. Where'd it go? I lost the cap. Well, once it's up, realistically, guys, when you open brake fluid, when you open it and moisture gets in there, and you let it sit on the shelf, it's trash. After I pump this thing, if it ends up being too much in there, I'll find some way to suck it out of there or get a paper towel and soak it up. Actually, that's what I'm going to do right now, just a little bit. That way it doesn't uh, peek all over my car. Soak up, soak it. Slow and steady wins the race. Soaked that up. Yeah. Oh, I spilled a little bit. <laughs> okay. Put your cap back on. Where do we go? Ah, it's soaked down quite a bit.
got to pump the crap out of it, boss. It's really soft. It feels nice. It feels really nice. Okay. Okay, let's put this back on. You're going to want to turn it inside out. Snap it down at the collar. Make sure it's firmly down in there. Just put it down. Line it up. Boop, boop, boop. Go all the way around. That's that. Straighten her out. That's it. Then you're going to take this. Nice and tight. Sweet. Don't forget your trim piece. We're gonna tighten up this dry. I already got it in there. Get a friend. Uh, big sticks already left. That thing is heavy. Uh, it's two pieces, so it's really odd. I basically held that thing up there with one arm while I was making up a socket and extension to get the carrier bolts in there. Uh, one piece of aluminum is definitely a must. Here we go. Get your trusty dusty impact with a 10 millimeter under. I like to go for extensions uh, to keep myself out of the way of things. Need that one more. Come up here. I'm not tying these up all the way. I'm just gonna just gonna run them in a little bit. Run them in a little bit. Now get that out of there. Rotate it over. Good. Dry shafts in, y'all. Uh, never mind. We need to find them to carry beer. Forgot about that. This would be a 13 on your carrier. 10 millimeter back there, 13 up here. Yep. And up here, um, on the back of the trans on the tail shaft, it's an 18. Okay, that's all in. Very nice. All we like is exhaust. Put this on the ground and go for a ride. Well, all right, guys. Everything is done. Exhaust is in all the way back. All the hangers are hung. Drive line is tight. O2 sensor that we removed earlier is tight. Everything's hooked up. All the wiring harness is hung. Clutch is bled that's it man pretty excited to put this on the ground and go for a cruise think about going to sonic do it old school style pull up at the sonic drive-in after we get a car wash got to take it easy though for 500 miles 500 miles is a breaking period breaking periods suck because all you want to do is go anyways just reminiscing with proper tools and proper planning proper shop lift tranny jack six to eight hours um, at home taking my time dodging the rain yesterday this has been three days but I have been procrastinating um, I hate laying on concrete I'm spoiled anywho let me get this on the ground we'll go for a cruise
<laughs> That's it. Wow. I don't have a mount for this phone, so that's what you're gonna get. Um, I've been sitting here pumping this clutch pedal. Pumping, 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 pumping. We're rolling for now. Gonna go to the gas station and get a car wash. Oh, this clutch, buddy. So nice. It's very, 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 very soft. Maybe softer than factory. I'm not sure yet. Let's do a little downshift. Nice. This car is so bad, man. Yes, so good. Probably sounds like I'm speeding this neighborhood. I'm not, I'm only doing 30. That was big sticks that we just passed back there. It was waving at us. Uh-oh. Check engine lines back. I don't know why it's doing this. It's probably because it's been sitting so long. It's been sitting for like three months, dude. Yeah, she ain't happy. When that check engine light comes on, it's acting like it's only running on six. So I'm gonna shut off. E brake. Open the door to turn the car off. Close the door. Start breaking. Setting one. Check engine light's still there. Whatever. I'll deal with it. The important thing is the car drives. Well, hell yeah, man. Clutch is sick. It drives awesome. I have a check engine light. I'm going to go figure that out right now. Um, probably just EVAP. Because last time I got a check engine light, it was from not driving it for like a week. And then an EVAP code popped up. Delete it. Never came back until I got one now. Clutch was just amazing. Like, buttery soft. Pushing on a soft pillow. And for a double a twin plate clutch capable of handling 800 horsepower, I'm amazed. McLeod really nailed it on this one. Also, huge thanks to LMR, Late Model Restoration, LMR.com. They have been there for me every time I've bought anything from them. No matter what it was, really, really fast shipping. I got my clutch in like two days. Um, I've gotten exhaust from them before. I got it the very next day. Couldn't ask for a better company to do, do business with. I look forward to breaking in this clutch. It's a 500-mile break-in. I just set the trip in it, just washed it, just threw my LMR 
SVE and McLeod Racing stickers on this thing. That's all I got for you. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.